Stephen Browning. It is Tiamana Tenakai. Kia Koto, Huri Noa, Itifare, Tenakoto, Katoa. Katoa Mona Kakariki, Kita Karo, Iti To Toetoi, Hana Fakato, Tata, Apanana, Na, Haranga Nuku, Haranga Kai, Haranga Tangata. I rise to, uh, on behalf of the Greens to speak on the estimates debate around healthy soil, healthy food, healthy people, effectively primary industries and food safety. And in particular, I want to speak to the discussion on organics that um, was had in select committee with the minister and where we're going in this country in terms of promotion of organic agriculture and horticulture, primary production overall. Basically, we need to look at what is the state of play internationally and see whether we're missing an opportunity. In 2014, the international market was more than 100 billion. It's rocketing away still. 2015, 83% of US families bought some organics. And New Zealand, Aotearoa New Zealand, exported 250 million of certified organic products that year, an 11% increase on 2012. We are growing, but we are not growing anywhere near as fast as we would if this government put in the resources that other, other governments do to ensure that benef the benefits of organics are seen, both in value for export, but also the environmental benefits that we can um, expect. Here in Aotearoa, supermarket sales of certified organic products raced up 127 per cent to 167 million over those few years. Here, New Zealanders are prepared to pay more, if necessary, for organics to some degree. It needs to be affordable and the government needs to get in behind that. Consumers want certified organic and I add they want GE, GMO free Kai. GE free is the fastest growing label in the USA, the fastest. Organics is the next one down in terms of food. People over there where they've been fully exposed to the risks and the poor nutritional quality of GE food know it, and yet we've still got people here pushing for it, and this government is supporting some of it through the research funding. But where is it doing it for organics where there is actually a growing demand? I think we need to compare with Denmark. Denmark, not too many more people than New Zealand, similar agricultural focus, and has understood the benefits of going down the organic path. It carried on growing even through economic recessions and it accounts for something like 7.8% of all food products sold there now. But what they're actually doing, the government's getting in behind, it's got a target of 60% of all public food being organic. So it's doing it a procurement basis, but it actually realises that there's a benefit. In Copenhagen, I think they're over 80% at this point already of the publicly available food. Um, restaurants, canteens, public institutions have doubled in the last three years in terms of their sale of it. But of course, they're also realising an enormous benefit in terms of uh, exports. I would like to see New Zealand go down that path and I'd like to see the government actually get in behind it instead of talking about divisiveness within a sector that actually is not as divided as is being made out. And even should it be, there's no reason why the government should not be getting in there and supporting that sector to get going. It doesn't even have the advantage of uh, commodity levies, uh, the same as other sectors, and yet the government's expecting them to play 
um, up to a certain level where they could actually be getting in um, behind. Norira, Tenakoto, 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 Katoa. Thank you. Well, members, the question is that votes lands and vote primary industries and food safety stand part of the schedules. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Members, we come now to votes in social development.